speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're doing well. Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there. Lots of brunches, lunches, and dinners, right? And that's a good thing. We need to take a moment, right, to recognize and celebrate everything that mothers do for us. So I hope you have a good day in whatever plans you have. I think we're going to go take a hike, and since it's Mother's Day, the boys are not allowed to complain. <laughs> That's the Mother's Day rule. Not one single complaint for the entire hike. Good times, good times. Uh, you know, Mother's Day celebrations, they date back a long time ago. The ancient Greeks would celebrate Rhea, the mother of the gods and goddesses, right? And the Romans had their celebrations with their own mother goddesses going back to 250 BC, coinciding with the spring festivals. And in the English church, in the English church, they have Mothering Sunday, that Mothering Sunday. You ever heard of that? It falls on the fourth Sunday of Lent. It's supposed to be a nice break during Lent. A tradition in England would, the tradition was that you would return to your home church, your mother church. And that is the church in which you were baptized, right? So it was a homecoming, mothering, it was a homecoming, basically. And I think St. John's has a bit of that old English flavor because Mother's Day is a big deal. It's packed, all right? Look at this. It's a bit of a homecoming. But what a nice thing for mothers to want their families to be together and come to church together. <laughs> and so here at church, we are still in Easter season. In fact, this is the last Sunday of Easter, next week being Pentecost. And even though we are at the end of Easter, our gospel lesson that you just heard comes, it comes to us before Jesus was crucified and resurrected, okay? So a little context here. This lesson that we just heard, this gospel comes to us right after Jesus washes his friend's feet, what comes to be known as Monday Thursday, okay? It comes right after it. I want you to hear what he says again. <laughs> you hear the command. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Now, we've all heard that a thousand times. <laughs> and unfortunately, we hear it so much, we don't really, I don't know, we don't do anything with it, right? So I want you to sit with this. Let's slow down, let it sink in. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Now, as many times as I've heard that scripture, the way I usually hear it is, because I love you, you need to go love other people. Does that make sense? That's sort of the way I interpret that. I've always seen it that way. God loves us, which enables us to go love other people. And that's fine. But this week, I guess with Mother's Day coming, I saw something else. I saw something else in it. Because just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. It could also be answered a different way. See, I always answer the question as why. Why do you love other people? Because God loves you. But what if this is more about the question, how? <laughs> how does God love you? What if this is how we love? Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. So how does Jesus love people, y'all? That's easy. Read your Bible. <laughs> Jesus healed those who were hurting. He included the outcast. He told people the truth. He washed his friend's feet. You know the stories. It's like he gave himself to others. Does that make sense? He gave himself to others. You see, I hear the commandment to love one another, and I immediately think that I need to have a nice positive attitude toward people, <laughs> as if loving someone was just to have good feelings for someone. But if Jesus is saying to love people as I have loved you, he means real action, y'all. <laughs> he means real action, not just sentimental feelings. He wants us to give ourselves to each other. He wants us to give ourselves to each other, just like a mother gives herself to a child. You see, a mother's love is Christ's love. It is. A mother's love is Christ's love. I see it all the time in our mothers. <laughs> I see it mostly in the little things, right? The day-to-day -day things. In between doing laundry, dishes, cleaning the house, working outside the home, driving all over Knoxville in traffic for kids' activities and sports. And while you're doing all that, 
while you're tying shoes and putting band-aids on, underneath all of it, you hug your kids so they know that they are loved. <laughs> you dry their tears <laughs> so they feel love. You encourage them, and yeah, you get on to them. Every mom's got the look, every mom. But you do it out of a deep, senseless love, a selfless love, and you do it over and over again. Good mothers just keep giving themselves away. I see it all the time. I see it in my own life for sure, and in so many of you other moms out there. You truly love one another. You give yourself away. Now here's the rub. <laughs> here's the rub. Moms aren't the only ones who are called to be doing this mothering. Sorry, guys, we're all in it too. <laughs> None of us get off because we worship a God that wants every single child of his to be loved. We worship a God who wants every single child of his to feel love, to know love. Every single person, every single child of God loved. That's God's desire. Looks like we all have some mothering to do, folks. Some mothering to do. But could you imagine such a beautiful world? <laughs> Maybe it would feel like this. A mother's love is Christ's love. They show us how to love. Thank you, God, for mothers. Amen. <laughs>